Kevin Manning is someone who uh, is transformational in his leadership. He created a university where there was none. He's visionary, he's passionate, he's focused, and above all, he's a great leader. He created from what was a pretty simple college with a pretty simple structure and group of offerings, a large university committed in a way no other school in the U.S. was to ensuring that students received a liberal arts education while at the same time being readied for immediate employment upon graduation. People have this sense of just deep um, respect, affection, but a sense of awe about what he's accomplished. We think of a visionary as somebody who sees into the future in a way that others don't see. Very few people could have imagined even a decade ago that Stevenson would have just moved so far ahead in the world of higher education, but Kevin knew it. Hello, I'm Jeff Salkin. When you think of Stevenson University, many things come to mind. Career-ready graduates, growing student body and national reputation, new campuses, and competitive athletics. Stevenson's transformation is phenomenal in the field of American higher education, but it could not have happened without the spirit of a college poised for change and an academic administrator who saw its potential and rallied a campus community around a new vision of itself. This is the story of President Kevin Manning and Stevenson University. When Kevin Manning arrived at what was then Villa Julie College, he clearly understood the mission of the college and the spirit of its close-knit community. However, he also saw the trends in higher education at large and the need to forge a new path for the institution if it was to thrive in the coming decades. After his inauguration in fall 2000, Kevin Manning spent the next few years forging the connections, developing a strategy, and building a consensus around the college's future direction. As he did so, he was creating a new campus culture and a spirit of enthusiasm for the heights that Villa Jolie could reach. I think he really did want to know what people thought. Um, so he was always asking, well, what do you think about this? Uh, so I think he really did want to gather people's ideas um, as he was forming his own, I guess, leadership of how, what direction to take us. He realized he was never going to get unanimous support to anything, but he wanted consensus support. And uh, when you get consensus support, um, you're, you're, be, you're very uh, likely to be successful. When President Manning arrived, his concept was to turn this college into a university. And that was a huge change. That change touched almost everything that we did at this institution. It touched how we recruited people, how we structured ourselves. We became a number of different schools with a dean in each school, a much larger organization, able to do things that we couldn't do before. Before he went off making a lot of waves and splashing around in the water and saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to clean house and we're going to become this kind of college. He listened to the people who were there and he respected their opinions and then he was able to, to, to tie together the strength of the college with what was needed in higher ed at the time. And that is a gift that a lot of people do not have. I think the way he presented it is I have arrived and I believe that this is what we can do with Villa Julie College. And he had the ability to convince everybody from trustees to staff to faculty that they were going to be part of this dream that he had. I think what he added was this adventurous spirit, uh, an energy almost like, you know, Phil Jackson, <laughs> the coach, right? He, he brought in this very optimistic energy that anything was possible. His idea of campus culture was that people would be involved with the students, all of us. I said to Dr. Manning, um, I'm sure a lot of people have come in here and they've asked for more money and more budget. Um, I'm not going to ask you for that. At the Division III level, student athletes get very little national attention, media attention. And if you have time, I'm simply going to ask you if you can come to some games. 
because it will mean every one of the students on athletes will recognize that you're there. My daughters remember Dr. Manning from the open house and he represented an approachable president of a, of, a, of a university. And I think that was part of the selling process, quite frankly. They felt comfortable coming here because of how he projected himself and the school. About a month into Allison's um, freshman year, he came into the cafeteria and actually went over to the table where she was sitting with a couple of her soccer teammates. And then he said, so you've been here a month now, what's working for you and what can we do to make it better? He very much cared about the way the students felt about their experience, and I think that makes him so human. Since its founding in 1947, Villa Jolie was about career preparation. Kevin Manning saw the need to make this relevant for the 21st century. From this new reality, the concept of career architecture was born. He actually chose something that we desperately needed, we meaning the community at large, the world at large, marrying the liberal arts with career preparation. He took that concept, he ran with it, he distinguished us from the generic college. And basically what career architecture is, it's an opportunity for students to identify their core values and then to use those values as a basis for determining their mission and vision and strategies in their life to determine their own career. We are helping our students to understand who they are at their best. We work very collaboratively with our faculty through our industry specialists. And we also encourage our students from the first year out, beginning to increase that understanding of what makes them tick through the self-awareness that they're gaining, as well as the experiences in the workplace, in the laboratory, in their communities. They're able to build this brand that is so valuable and beneficial to our workplace. We can talk about the value of the liberal arts, of course, but we need to talk about how do we help students envision the possibilities. It's only through that practical experience, and that is where Stevenson really excels. Your personal career plan is complex. It takes commitment and a relevant education. What if you could design your own career or even reinvent it? Be the In my conversations with employers across the region, what I have found is that employers understand how well prepared the Stevenson student is. The emphasis on career preparation from our perspective as an employer is clearly working. What we find is that the Stevenson students and graduates are hardworking. They have experience coming into our organization and it's, they hit the ground running. Expansion was an essential component of the strategy that Kevin Manning set forth. Nearly a million square feet of new facilities, increasing faculty and staff, adding new programs for undergraduates, and creating a school of graduate and professional studies. All were key to making the college a competitor in today's higher education marketplace and doubling its enrollment in the course of a decade. When Kevin came on board and when he was interviewed, we right away said, that one of the very first tasks will be we need to have residential housing. At that time, we already had 300 students who were living at the colony, and we knew that in order to continue with students off campus, we needed to have housing. And we have actually a new $100 million campus that we built in Owings Mills, mm -hmm. six miles from the main campus, and we now have room for 1,300 residential students. Fantastic. Uh, in, the, uh, in May, we're going to have a groundbreaking for a new school of business, and we're actually um, um, doing a national search for a new dean of the school of business. The notice has to be taken, I think, around uh, the role of Howard Brown, in the sense that Howard uh, suggested if you're going to grow, you know, I may have the physical plant uh, that uh, you'll need to do that. We were crowded at Greenspring. Classrooms were crowded, numbers were creeping up because we just didn't have enough space. So to know that there was going to be a new school building there, an academic building, and to know that there were going to be residential halls, those were all great things. The only iffy part was the commute between the two campuses, and as we know today, that's worked out fine. We did things extremely aggressively. I mean, I know that we were saying, let's, well, let's build dorms, for instance. It was, the first set of dorms. The students were moving in 
and we were moving the furniture into the dorms the day that the students were moving in. And uh, we actually planned it so some of the families were waiting and we were holding them up in the, the community center so that we could get the furniture into. That's how close we cut the, uh, the schedule. The way they did that growth and the transformation of the university, it started not only with facilities. It also expanded uh, their academic programs, including advanced degrees. So it was a total transformation from a college to a residential, thriving university. Essential to Villa Jolie's transformation under President Manning was the development of a new identity. With the growth of the previous years and the creation of six academic schools, it was clear its destiny was something larger than a college. June 2008 was a pivotal time in the history of the institution because after a long, deliberative process, a new identity was born, Stevenson University. Thinking back over the name change years, we took our time, we did everything right, got input from as many sectors of the, of the community as we could during that time, so that faculty and students and alumni and staff members and members of the community at large were able to weigh in on what they thought about should we change the name, why should we change the name, and what should we change it to. It's always been our effort uh, in this process to really be as inclusive and as transparent as possible. And those are some of the things that we learned from other institutions who would basically, when I sat down with the president of one institution, the person said, don't do it like we did it. So uh, what we tried to do is we tried to take as much time as we could to do this as slowly as possible, to give people a chance to really share their points of view, to see if there was something that we were missing in this whole process. So. In any event, with that in mind, um, we are now going to uh, announce the new name. Stevenson was the name of the small town where Villa Jolie first originated. And also, this was online and people could vote. In a sense, they could um, include their comments and Stevenson seemed to be the one that a lot of people liked. It shows that we anchored our name in the location of the original campus. All of the people in the community around us saw it as a positive because they knew that Dr. Manning was going to do something different and move the school in a direction not away from what we were doing in the past but just to a better and brighter future. Today, a bronze Mustang called Victory graces the university's athletic complex at Owings Mills. It's a symbol not only of the winning spirit that drives Stevenson's teams, but of the accomplishments of the university as a whole. President Manning realized that building the university's athletic profile was not only a student recruitment tool, but a way to engage alumni, parents, and the greater community in the story of Stevenson's success. Dr. Manning made a very bold uh, statement that we were going to be a national leader in Division III athletics. Athletics is not an easy thing to put in a formula of if you do this, this, and this, you will win because there are many, many variables. With the university's position in Baltimore, with our progressive disposition, um, with our coaching staff in place, he felt that we could absolutely be a national leader in Division III athletics. In a blink of an eye, when we were building this campus, the decision was to build the gym because we needed to be where the students were at. And then shortly thereafter, built the stadium, which would service 400 and some odd student athletes between men's and women's soccer, field hockey, football, and the world crosses. Um, he wasn't shy about solving that problem of how do we become a national leader in Division III athletics. Um, but he also knew that the greater good was going to be for the students and ultimately Stevenson University. For him to bring in a football program, other presidents thought he was out of his mind, and he wasn't. The football discussion was uh, pretty spirited in that he went through the whole economics about um, why you do football. You're basically getting 100 new students um, a year. So that discussion went on for an hour, very spirited, and we all got on board. And he let it pause for a few minutes, 
And he said, well, now let's talk about the marching band. Oftentimes, people would say, well, where are you going to... Where are you going to play your first football game? And we said, well, right over there. And when I pointed, there was no stadium. And people thought, well, you're nuts. There's no way there's going to be a stadium there in eight, ten months. And there was a stadium. We had our first game. Maybe there wasn't complete lockers and everything complete inside, but certainly the stadium looked great. You know, it started with a lacrosse program. And then eventually, you know, recently you see everything from football to, you know, all the other sports, uh, sand volleyball, ice hockey. Um, you know, the football program, it was definitely an enrollment machine. What does a stadium and a football team bring to the university, not just the athletic program, but the university in general and, and its impression on the community? Well, you know, it creates a lot of excitement on campus, and I've said that uh, one of the factors here is it changes the male-female ratio, which used to be 25-75% female, and now it's 40% male. Uh, be, just because of the football team and attracting other types of students as well and it creates a real sense of excitement on campus. He grew this institution and he took athlete, athletics right along with that growth, step for step. And being your president has been my greatest privilege and honor. It has, been, it has brought me joy, it has also brought me frustration and challenges to be sure, but my overarching emotions are joy and pride. It's been an honor to be the president of Stevenson. That the Hall of Fame committee chose to recognize me with inclusion in the 2016 Hall of Fame is a tremendous honor and means more to me than you could possibly express. Stevenson could not have grown without vision, strategy, and some calculated risks. The addition of the Owings Mills North Campus exemplified this approach. Stevenson needed new state-of-the-art academic facilities to attract students, but it also needed to balance seizing opportunity with budgetary reality. The result, a former pharmaceutical manufacturing center, turned into a 200,000 square foot state-of-the-art academic center for nursing, healthcare professions, the sciences, and design. One day at my desk, I received a phone call from a, uh, a corporate real estate firm asking if we would be interested in the Shire property and I said certainly would be interested in the Shire property but we have absolutely no money so he kept he the real estate agent kept going and going and I said well yeah I, I think I could probably offer five million dollars so he didn't he didn't accept that very well he got I don't want to say he got angry but he didn't didn't think that was an appropriate answer and basically hung up but then he called back a couple weeks later, and then I said the same thing. Because at that point, we had no idea that we had ever even entertained the thought of the Shire property. But one thing led to another. After numerous phone calls, we ended up paying $10.5 million for a property that was worth substantially more than 10.5, had 28 acres and 217,000 square physical plant. The ability to add an academic center of the scope and scale of the Manning Academic Center is extraordinary. Uh, it's an absolutely magnificent facility and it is going to provide not just uh, an environment for our current students and faculty but uh, an environment, a learning environment that will grow with Stevenson University I think for years and years to come. The opening of this state-of-the-art facility is an extraordinary transformational event for Stevenson and marks another stage in the fulfillment of Dr. Kevin Manning's great vision. Having received executive committee support and anticipating full board approval, it is my pleasure to announce that this remarkable new facility will now be known as the Kevin J. Manning Academic Center. talking to our students and, and they're making a comment of the challenge of their schedule and athletics. They have to budget their time and do time management. And they were talking about, um, you know, they have a, a class here at Owings Mills and they have a class at Greenspring and they also have a class at the MAC. And I was a little confused and we're in the Middle Atlantic Conference and I said, the MAC, I'm not sure I understand. He goes, oh, you know, the MAC, you know, the other campus. 
And I said, I, I, didn't, I, I thought you meant Owings Mills North. And, uh, and is that what you mean? He goes, no, no, the, the Manning Academic Center. You know, we are all affectionately refer to it as the MAC. After 16 years of innovative leadership, Kevin Manning concluded his presidency in the fall of 2016. He left an indelible mark on Maryland's and the nation's higher education landscape. He also imparted a legacy of unbounded optimism that animates every student, alumnus, faculty, and staff member who were a part of Stevenson University's transformation. He kind of led the school as a businessman, but also as kind of like with the compassion of a teacher. The exponential growth has provided all of us with opportunities again and again to be challenged and to um, be able to do things that would not be possible at many other schools. We have to attribute that to, great, to a great extent to Dr. Manning, who absolutely had a vision for what we could be that um, I don't think um, all of us really saw in ourselves um, in the earlier years. Grown up here my whole life and have represented uh, this area for almost 20 years and I remember growing up and it was just Villa Julie and uh, across the forest a mound of dirt and uh, whatever was here. Um, the mound of dirt has become an absolutely gorgeous campus. Dr. Manning, I remember when Ted Herc had called me and asked whether I would meet with the new president of Villa Julie. Uh, who had some ideas about the future of that school. And I remember your vision for the growth of Villa Jolie at the time. And I thought to myself, well, he's a dreamer. You know? uh, that's wonderful. I'm glad that he's ambitious. I'm glad that he thinks that he's going to be able to do these things that are critically needed for our community. I didn't realize that he would exceed even the plans that he presented on that day. There are so many stories about the students who've come up with him, come up to him and talk to him about accomplishments that they have made as a result of being at Stevenson. I think a number of people have felt welcome here where they might not have felt welcome someplace else. When I think about President Manning, I think about the slogan, imagine your future, design your career. And I think of it with him as he imagined a future and transformed a college. So in every aspect of what is now Stevenson University, you see his fingerprints. Dr. Manning has never asked anything of anyone that he wouldn't do himself. And I think that's the mark of a great leader, that they are willing to go out on a limb and thus they can ask others to do that with them. I think all uh, men have a vision. A, a few men work their vision. Uh, you see it in our facilities, you see it in the coaches, most importantly you see it in our student athletes. And that vision uh, will be long lasting. He has definitely um, taken the entire college, now the university, on a road less traveled and, and we're certainly much better for it. We've all heard a lot about how Kevin has transformed Stevens. But I think his real legacy is going to be the transformation he's made in students' lives. He'll be missed, you know, and I'm not sure everyone realizes how much we'll miss him. A president can talk about a president and say something about his work and all of that. But at the end of the day, I really love that guy. He's a nice, good friend. He really is. <laughs>